with the withdrawal of neeraj chopra indian athletics you know contingent at the commonwealth games suddenly starts looking a little bare but despite that i i i think neeraj chopra wasn't going to be our best gold medal hope at the commonwealth games and we still have that gold medal hope at the commonwealth games still in the competition in fact we have three of them all of them in the same category that is so the category where india actually has got its best chance of winning a gold medal at the commonwealth games is the men's triple jump and that's probably is not just because you know we have got three triple jumpers who are at or over 17 meters this year but also due to the fact that the field at the commonwealth games is usually not very you know is not very good in the triple jump just for perspective at the last commonwealth games the gold medal went at 1688 meters which is an okay jump but it's not comparable to anything at the world level so this year i think that any one of praveen chitravel paul eldos and abdullah abubakar could get a gold medal in fact i wouldn't be surprised if we see a 1 2 3 from india on the podium in the men's triple jump so praveen chitravel has a season's best of 17 18 meters paul eldos has a season's best of 16 99 meters and abdullah abubakar has a season's best of 17 19 meters the three of them are the best commonwealth games jumpers in the triple jump category this year by by distance i think the closest we've got to I, any of these guys from a different country is janai peren chief of bermuda he has a best jump you know this season of 1695 he's done 17 meters in the past but this season he's not come close to that in fact at the world championships where paul eldos became the first indian to reach the finals of the men triple jump the bermudan only jumped 1638 so it's going to be really difficult to see a non indian on the podium at this at the risk of jinxing it i think we're going to see a gold medal in the men's triple jump for sure the next the next event where i think india has got a strong chance of getting a gold medal is the men's long jump we would be although three we had three athletes who probably could have qualified for the long jump we are only sending two that's murli shri shankar and anish yaya now both of these guys have got 8 meter plus jumps and murli finished you know a career high 7th at the world championships so he's going to be full of confidence going into this particular competition the only thing is that unlike triple jump the field is slightly closer to the indians in the men's long jump so we have a uh, tajay gale of jamaica he's not had a good season he's actually a former world champion but he's not had a great season at all he didn't have a jump at the world championships but apart from that we have got wayne wayne pinock of jamaica and henry frain of australia both pinock and frain have a pretty good seasons best and a good pretty good personal best sorry uh, pinock has jumped 814 and frain has jumped 834 but they're not consistent this year so pinock finished 9th and frain finished 12th at the world championship this year so considering the form that shri shankar is in it's going to be i i think that he's probably going to finish on top of the podium there's one other event where i think that india's got a slightly outside chance of winning a gold medal and this is a surprise because the competitor who is you know who who I'm picking for a gold medal didn't technically qualify for these games i'm talking about seema antil so seema antil didn't meet the select, you know the qualification criteria laid down by the afi but the afi still picked her you know because she's got like pedigree she's a three time commonwealth silver medalist so one time bronze medalist so she's competed in she's competing in her fifth commonwealth games which is a remarkable you know period of competition you know she, it's it's remarkable her uh, to look at her longevity in this competition for perspective she competed at her first commonwealth games in 2006 so seema antil has a best of some 57 something this season and that's not really enough for a medal but the only thing is seema antil usually picks up her level at the commonwealth games or the or the olympics she's routinely thrown about 60 meters in both of these competitions and anything about 60 meters will be very interesting for a gold medal and that's because seema antil's main rival over the last two commonwealth games was danny samuels of australia and Dan, danny samuels retired last year that meant that seema antil suddenly made her way to the top because kamalpreet kaur who was another indian she's been banned for dope so she's not competing at these commonwealth games there was another athlete at the commonwealth games who probably would have won gold but she's very surprisingly she's not taking part i'm talking about shadel lawrence of jamaica 
So Shadi Lawrence did really well at the Olympics last year. She was one of the breakout stars for Jamaica. She didn't win a medal over there, but she threw 63 meters plus. So she was seen as the one of the favorites going into the Commonwealth Games. But she's not been named in Nigeria in this in the Jamaican national team. And Jamaica, in fact, not named a women's discus thrower. So that means that Seema Antil just needs to throw something in the 60 meter range. She doesn't need to throw like a 63, 64 meter, which she probably would have in the past. She just throws about 60, 61 meters and she's probably going to get a gold medal. And 60, 61 meters is very well within her reach. So she is the, you know, the dark horse, I'd say, for a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. I mean, this completely depends, you know, what how she shows up in the... I, I, again, I'm not seeing like the gold medal going above 61, 62 meters. So if Seema Antil comes in, throws in at that range, she's probably going to win her first gold medal, you know, at in her fifth Commonwealth Games. There's one competition, that's, there's one event that's left. And even though I don't think this is for a gold medal, it's still interesting because it's an interesting look for the future. And that's going to be Avinash Sable. So Sable took part at the World Championships. He, got, he reached his second final at the World Championships after, the, after 2019, where he reached the final for the first time. So Avinash Sable didn't have the greatest final. He recorded one of his slowest times in the last... He recorded his slowest time in the last three years. So that was very surprising. But Sable still could, you know, become the first Indian steeplechaser to win a medal at the Commonwealth Games. Because even at the World Championships, when he finished 11th, it's not a great, not with, with a very average time. He was still behind only two other Kenyans. I mean, there's only two other Kenyans who, who are going to be competing in the Commonwealth Games who are ahead of him. So Sable, even at his, you know, one of his worst performances was still probably good enough for a bronze at the Commonwealth level. The two Kenyans who finished ahead of him were Conceslas Kipruto and Abraham Kibiwat. Both of these are really good runners. And the fact that Sable was just behind them suggests that he's probably going to be in a similar position at the Commonwealth Games. So even though this will probably be a bronze medal that he gets, like he's in line for a bronze medal, it's... Still going to be a very important bronze medal, not just for the Indian, you know, steeplechase program, but also for Sable, you know, as he goes into, you know, a very important 2023 season, as even as he goes into a very important 2023 season.